Good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, here we are. It's the March edition of the uh, the VC Sharing Show with me and John. On a Monday. On a Monday, yes. We've broken the tradition. <laughs> yeah. The session happened on Sunday night. Uh, beautiful spring day here. Um, yeah. Well, without any further ado, we'll start sharing some music. We kicked off with um, a terrible cover, but a fantastic piece of, of vinyl, The Sweat Band, which is a kind of P-Funk Bootsy Collins collaboration, came out I think in 1981. And this was partly a tribute to the trumpet player Larry Hatcher, who played on a lot of um, Parliament, Clinton, P-Funk music and uh, has sadly died um, and we listened to an amazing track called Jamaica which I have to say I also got very upset because John told me that Bootsy has stopped playing yeah. the bass yeah wasn't quite sure why but uh, I don't know why actually it was announced yeah. I think he announced on his Facebook page yeah that he's not playing anymore mm. he's still making music but not playing bass anymore yeah so sweat band um, and the Uncle Jam label one of the only releases on that label I think. indeed yeah, yeah. So, keeping with the P-Funk vein, then went for um, the track Balance of America Roots It's Young, which was the kind of, I guess, kind of concept album for, um, for Funkadelic, double album, um, which came out in the early 70s, I think. Yeah, 72. A very kind of weird psychedelic track, actually. Kind mm. of psychedelic, almost like a prog track. Well, it sounded like a prog track. Um, yeah, it's an interesting, I mean, if you don't know this one, this is probably the most varied Funkadelic record. It's everything from obviously the funk tunes through to things that are very, very, very much not funk. No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfunk. Yeah. So staying with a kind of P-funk flavour, classic um, early, well, late 80s hip-hop album, EPMD, Strictly Business, and we listened to You Got To Chill, which um, the first side of this is just mm. sublime. There's not a bad track there. And uh, yeah, heavily sampling More Bounce to the Ounce by Zap. Um, yeah, just a great piece of late 80s hip hop, EPMD. Yeah, very good. Thinking about the, I, I think I've been reading somewhere about the early um, origins of hip hop so forth, and also the realizing that um, Get Up Off of That Thing was one of the, um, get, sorry, Get On the Good Foot was one of the first tunes by James Brown that people started breakdancing to. And this is off. Um, yeah, the whole set of EPs came out in the UK only around kind of kind of rare groove time, wasn't it? Mm. And of course, Get On The Good Foot's the classic. And this is kind of a nice extended version as well with some interesting freaky keyboards from, mm. from James Brown on there as well. Brought back a lot of memories of the mid-80s, actually, of yeah. the kind of uh, Kiss FM rare groove scene in London. Yeah. Um, staying with funk, um, a regular... A Somebody who regularly appears on our videos is the um, redoubtable Little Beaver guitarist, um, Willie Beaver Hale. And this is a, an album called Black Rhapsody. It's all instrumental. And we listen to a fantastic track called Hit Me With Funky Music, mm. which is the third track on the first side. Yeah, just um, as actually John pointed out, sounding quite similar to Johnny Guitar Watson. Um, but yeah, great beat on this one. Yeah, thinking of that kind of biting guitar sound, maybe think a little bit of um, Wawa Watson and uh, almost a nice statutory <laughs> session, Barry White album. <laughs> this is Together Brothers, which is a, a soundtrack which has never really got the kind of credit it should do, I think, which was Barry White working with Gene Page and Love Unlimited and uh, for a fairly dodgy black exploitation movie, actually, not a great film, um, and played the track Someone's Gonna. Some, someone's going to off the man off that, which has got some great kind of actually harder sounding Barry White mm. than his own some of his own records around the same time. Good record, easy to find actually. This one. Mm. Um, big shout out to the Mellow Man, yeah, the new VC contributor uh, from the UK who sh showed this album um, a couple of videos ago, which is um, who is it, Francois de Roubaix. Um, a French composer. Um, Just to show you've got double vision. That's it. That's how in tune John and I are. We both have this I, album. I had it in the box for quite a while. Um, this is the soundtrack to an erotic lesbian vampire 
film from the early 70s, which I hadn't seen. John seen it. I got to see it, yeah. It, wasn't, it, wouldn't, it didn't stand out I have to say, <laughs> in film history. Um, I think we listened to the track called Red Lips, but basically it's, it's, a, it's a great album, a beautiful reissue. I mean, a really gorgeous um, packaging. I won't go into all of it, but um, still, still possible to get hold of this. Um, and what's it sound like? It sounds like sort of DJ Shadow meets um, a spaghetti western, I guess. Um, yeah, very, very nice. Good. Yeah, and great to um, have another great contributor on the VC who's turning us on yeah, to great music. Yeah, good stuff. Then went, um, there's two compilations that came out in back in the, I think back in the mid 80s, or the 90s actually, of the Tribe label from Detroit, very famous, another mm. in the same kind of bag as Strata East and Black Jazz, that kind of thing. And um, I played the track off this one by Marcus Belgrade called Space Odyssey. Now the reason I played this version and not other ones is that they, they, the sound on these two compilations is fantastic actually. It makes me think that quite a lot of the other reissues of Tribe stuff have not had the master tapes actually. Mm. But the, this is a great compilation, got Doug Hammond, Phil Randall in, Marcus Belgrave. Wendell Harrison and so forth. And there are two volumes of this which came out in P-Vine in, the, in um, Japan. And I've got other versions. These, these are the ones that sound the best. Actually. I have to say that possibly was the track of the night mm. for me, or certainly one of them. Yeah, absolutely amazing sounding. Yeah. And I've got the vibes from the Tribe CD. Yeah. But it doesn't, doesn't sound any you know, better. Right right the beginning <clears throat> sounded like the speakers were erupting. Yeah. Actually. It's amazing. And uh, it sounds almost like a cross between... Freddie Hubbard's Red Clay and Sun Ra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And sort of staying with a kind of slightly otherworldly music, um, I mean, this is not exactly a rare record, but it, it did sounds sound brilliant, fantastic. actually, which is um, the title track from Weather Report's Black Market. Um, just some wonderful sounds, actually, sort of, and kind of a fusion of sounds that definitely was quite groundbreaking, mm. I think, at the time. So, yeah, Joe Zarwin, a bit of a master. Absolutely. I'm staying in kind of similar-ish bag, and this has appeared at a session before, I think, and I might have even made a, a, another video about this at one point. But the M2 may record Rebirth Cycle, which was, um, a, again, kind of, I think it was recorded in the mid-70s. It came out in the late 70s. Um, almost like a who's who of the whole scene, really. Stanley Cowell, Michael Henderson, Dee Dee Bridgewater, um, Reggie Lucas, um, Jimmy Heath, Azar Lawrence, are all here. But I played the tr track called Yebo, which is almost like Miles' band without Miles. Yeah, actually, and Bietti. With Bietti on, um, the famous Bietti on, um, on keyboards. And uh, as Mark said, and Toatha, who went on to sing on Juicy Fruit. Of That's course, right. Much later on. But it's a nice record, this one. And it's got a very, I didn't play that, it's got a very long track called Sace on here, which is great, actually. But a pretty rare record. Pretty, yeah, quite a rare record. Quite a rare record. Um, yeah, well, I think it was the connection with the, that, Al basically Foster. been yeah, yeah Al Foster and also a lot of those um, musicians backing Miles, which um, reminded me of this album and in particular uh, the track You and I, which is just an incredibly deep track. funky groove, amazing bass. And I'm not sure if it's Tom Barney or um, Marcus Miller on the bass. Sounds like it could be a bit of both of them actually. Yeah. Um, but a deep groove, John Schofield guitar, a bit of Mike Stern. Um, some Bill Evans on the sax. Yeah, I remember seeing Miles actually around about the time this came out at um, Hammond's Methodium. Um, yeah, I think his 80s works are sort of a bit overlooked at the moment. I'm yeah. sure we'll rediscover them soon. Gil Evans had a big hand in that record, so, but it was never credited. Mm. Um, so then went from Miles to somebody who influenced Miles, of course, Ahmed Jamal. And um, I've been looking for this record for years and years and years, actually. It's probably the rarest of the 20th century records. And it's Jamal Plays Jamal. And has amazing... Every, actually, every track on this one is really, really good. It's basically to him in a trio with um, a percussion as well, with Frank Gant and Jamal Nasser. Played the track Swaziland off here, which is just a classic course sampled famously by um, Jay Diller for De La Soul. And the sample comes in right at the end. Mm. But it's a great, very, very intense record, actually. It's and Ahmed plays much more 
um, aggressively than he does yeah, in most yeah, of his other stuff. For me, Rhodes play. For me, this and Awakening are the two Jamal records. Mm. Yeah, those are really good. And a great story on that, where you ended up not paying anything. Yeah, I didn't have to pay. Yeah, basically, did. I, I bought it from Dusty Groove, who I always, I've been buying lots of records from over the year. And um, it is in pretty bad condition. I mean, it sounds all the way through, but they basically gave me most of my money back from it, mm. which is very nice. Right, well, we had um, we had a break, because um, I not an obvious sort of choice for a follow-up record, John Lennon's Plastic Ono Band. But what a great sounding record this is. Um, we listened to a very brief but very beautifully formed track called Hold On, which is the second track on side one. And yeah, just a fantastic, fantastic stripped down um, song yeah. with lovely kind of vibrato guitar, wonderful Ringo Starr drumming. And um, I think it's Klaus Vorman on the bass. Mm. But yeah, great. If you don't have that album, you should, you should definitely have it. I was just sort of saying, amazing how um, both uh, John and Paul's first couple of solo records were so different sounding, so stripped down, but um, definitely worth having. Absolutely. Good stuff. Thinking of the, I suppose, the Lennon connection with Phil Spector as well. Yeah. And thinking of time for a tribute and played um, Be My Baby by the Ronettes, which is, of course, a tribute to Hal Blaine, the um, famous drummer with the Wrecking Crew plays on probably more records in your record collection than you know and this is just a, this came out in the UK it was a kind of like a, on on the Phil Spector label and it's yes. a <laughs> compilation of um, it's got all, everything on here River Deep Mountain High Be My Baby Then You Kiss Me loads and loads of, of, of um, Phil produced records and a kind of strange photograph of him in a behind a barbed wire fence on the back which might have been him anticipating the future <laughs> yes. um I think it was something about the slightly epic production mm. of that and got me sort of thinking also of uh, Motown, 60s, early 70s. And um, a track from this, I, I think it was unreleased, this album. It was, yeah. A David Ruffin album, just simply called um, David. Um, so David Ruffin from The Temptations. Recorded while he was with Motown, but never released. And we listened to the mono single seven inch mix of You Can Come Right Back to Me. Um, very sort of Womack esque, mm. actually, the vocal. Great album if you don't know this. And the great, virtually all the tracks are finished as well, so it's not like they were. They were yeah, yeah, they're no, absolutely ready. Good my, to sister, go. my sister's a big David Ruffin fan, so if you're watching Louise, hello Louise. Um, keeping with the same kind of same kind of area, Eddie Kendricks. And this was, I think, his first solo album, actually, All By Myself, which was my Christmas present from Mark, actually. <laughs> and played the first track, Let's Go Back to Day One, produced by Frank Wilson, who always got a little bit kind of um, overwhelmed, I think, by Norman Whitfield and all the other attention other guys. But it's a great, great sounding record. Again, kind of goes quite nicely with the David Ruffin. Mm. Eddie Kendrick's voice is much higher than, than David Ruffin's. And what I think are some some great bass lines from James Jones. Oh, as well. beautiful playing! Um, big shout out to Stavros the Spinning Greek, yeah, who emailed me and turned me on to the this album, which has recently come out in the states. It's um, Durand Jones and the Indications. It's called American Love Call, and um, a sound that's not a million miles away from the the last couple of records we've been playing. Yeah. <clears throat> some great vocals, some very good songs, um, all real playing. Um, we listened to a track called Morning in America, but that, basically there's not a dud track on this album. And um, thank you, Stavros, yeah, for uh, the, the power of the VC, sharing the great music. Thank you. I think there was something about the production sound, the very, very stripped down sounding production yeah. on that. It made me think of, this is a very odd kind of... Um, connection really but uh, there's a film called um twin falls idaho which was a very strange film actually if anyone's seen it but um the music was produced and written and composed by stuart matthewman who of course worked with um Sade yeah and maxwell and sweetback wasn't it? that was the other band yeah, was involved sweetback, in. right, and yeah. this is the last track on it called called track called don't grow it's very interesting music lots of orchestral there's a couple of really quite spectacular dub tunes on here as well which are very it's very out of out of um um, character really in a way as well and this is sung by Mark Anthony Thompson who also goes under the name of 
Chocolate Genius, who is a big, I'm a big fan of him. He's a great artist. So yeah, you should be able to find this for virtually nothing, but it's really worth it, actually. Mm. So it's actually a good listen for, for mm. a soundtrack album. Mm. I think the, uh, the orchestration of mm. that album got me thinking about um, a track from David Bowie's, was it Space Oddity? This album's, yeah, it's space. Oh, yeah. This was the uh, original cover, but this is not the original album. This was a re release that came out after David Bowie died. And uh, we listened to the track Wild Eyed Boy from Free Cloud, which has some huge orchestration. Um, I think, in combination with me reading Tony Visconti's biography and also a very in depth piece in this month's edition of Record Collector about this kind of early Bowie period that got me re-listening to this album, which I have to say is great. And you can get very easily kind of just get seduced by only listening to Space Oddity, but actually there's lots of good stuff. And this this track in particular, sort of, there is something which kind of m means it wasn't that surprising that he did Life on Mars a bit later. Sort of quite epic orchestration. Mm. Definitely. Thinking of... Um I don't know, I think what I was thinking of actually, but, <laughs> but, but there's, I suppose there's some kind of connection here but from maximalism to minimalism possibly, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> but uh, also thinking of obviously the sad death of Mark Hollis, much too young actually mm. in this case, from Talk Talk, uh, with, as you probably know from previous videos, we're big Talk Talk and Mark Hollis fans here, and played um, After the Flood of Laughing Stock, which still sounds incredibly magical. Absolutely. I mean, in the mid halfway through the, the tune, there's a basically what is like a kind of two minute noise solo, basically. Yeah. I and mean, this is still extraordinary music. And if you, if you haven't already checked out Talk Talk, you need to. Mm -hmm. The last three, well, the last two, al two albums, particularly, and the Mark Hollis solo record. Is incredible. Absolute classics. Yeah. So from Laughing Stock. Yeah. I must just plug my All Points Radio show at that yes. moment, which I often do right at the end of the video, by which time probably most people have stopped watching. But there'll be a link underneath this video. And just every every week I'm doing a two-hour show. And I did a Mark Hollis really good tribute. A 20-minute tribute at yes. the end of the show. Um, well, we definitely took a we took a, what I call an All Points left turn. But yes. um, somehow we went from Mark Hollis... Handbrake turn. Almost. A handbrake turn. <laughs> <laughs> to Greg Fillingaines, who is a keyboard player, session keyboard player, played on loads and loads of records, a lot of stuff with um, MJ. Um, and we listened to a fantastic tune called Lazy Nina, which was a collaboration he did with um, Donald Fagan. And yeah, just a beautifully played piece of music. Mm. Um, I think it was written by Donald Fagan, yes it is. Uh, yeah, not a great album, but for the price of admission, Lazy Nina is worth it. You can pick this up for a couple of pounds. Um, just an eight is sound, but just great really playing. Good. Just yeah, really, good. really, really good. Lovely. Um, the collection here is that there's, there's a very nice YouTube video with Greg playing with George Duke together in the studio. Mm. And uh, as you know, we don't need much of an excuse to play George Duke records here. And this is from one of his... I think it was almost his second or third to the last album he made before he died, called Face the Music, and played an incredibly intense track called Ten Mile Jog, oh which is, God. I mean, I've heard this, heard some of his late music described as smooth jazz. This is definitely not smooth not jazz. At all. Very, very full on. Um, Chris McBride playing electric bass, kind of channeling everybody. everybody in. So he sort of, in one track, he kind of. <laughs> basically tells the entire history of the yeah. bass guitar, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Great guitar playing from, um, I can never remember his name, go on, come back to me. But anyway, really good track and good album, actually. And mm. All these late albums are absolutely overlooked and they're all mm. worth getting, actually. Yeah. They've all got some great music on it. Yeah, amazing. Well, we definitely needed to um, ease down a bit. It was getting a bit later and that was a real exploding track. So... Mm. Um, this rediscovered an album that I'd had for years, but never really listened to this particular tune. And it's um, the band Manchild, who um, I think were the, the band that um, LA and Babyface sort of were originally in in the mid 70s. And this is a very kind of um, sort of earth, wind, and fire, two step, rare groove kind of track um, called Especially for You. A lovely bass line and amazing. Everybody sort of seems to be doing vocal harmonies together. Mm. Really nice track. Um, definitely was my highlight of the evening. Was it? Yeah, I love yeah. that. Love yeah. that 
And then my low light of the evening was something which didn't sound any... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I put stuff in the box that I hadn't heard, just to see what it sounds like, actually. And uh, I played this... Um, Pharaoh Sanders record, which was produced by Norman Connors, and it has got it, it, it's got quite a similar kind of sound, but it's also got um, um, Norman Connors trying to sing like Leon Thomas, which doesn't really <laughs> kind of work very well on it. But it, but yeah, so it's um, I think one to give a miss. This is the opposite of it. It's got so it's got some okay stuff on it's it. Nice but cover. It's nice cover. <laughs> <laughs> so love will find a way by Pharaoh Sanders. I can now. I was saying to Mark, sometimes you hear play a record and think, you're never going to play this again. <laughs> and this fits in that category. Um, chocolate Milk. Um, again, a sort of mid-70s soul and funk band, I guess, produced by Alan Toussaint. And we listened to the track called How About Love, which again is another... So, so I had this on a, on a sort of bootleg... Um, Rare Groove album that I picked up in Hackney years ago and just to have a, an original version although again I'm not sure what the quality of the, of where this the, the original source is it's not didn't sound fantastic better than my bootleg but only just Sonic milk sonically not as good as a Norman Connors but musically no. a hundred times better. yes <laughs> that's what he says um, then went for um, I should also say that was a classic kind of Rare Groove track wasn't yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere so um Kind of keeping in the kind of um, I don't know what's that area really, but anyway, went for the Dells, and went for their version of a whiter shade. Soulful, soulful harmonies actually. Yeah. Went for the Dells and uh, white, their version of a whiter shade of pale by Broker Horan. Classic Charles Stepney production with all kinds of stuff going on in the background. Very weird, kind of almost like distant sounding to it, but then mm. you've got this psychedelic guitar playing, which I'm pretty sure is Pete Cozy who went on to play with them. Um, Miles later on, mm. weaving in and out of it. Kind of Doesn't, well, you can tell Adele's production, or Charles Stepney's yeah, production, completely. within seconds. Yeah, and they're always just really, really weird. I mean, the, actually, the more you listen to his stuff, the weirder it gets. Yeah. Actually, I think. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how we ended up in a, listening to some Eberhard Weber after that. Um, I guess just sort of, you know, groundbreaking music. Um, I love this album, and I had this on um, CD, but have bought the album it sounds fantastic mm. it's called the colors of chloe on ecm um kind of 1974 album and yeah we listened to the title track the colors of chloe and if you don't know this album it's just really beautiful and quite kind of quite hard to pin down what it sounds like i mean obviously the bass is prominent but all the sounds are really really interesting um quite a lot of treated sort of electric piano and synth but there's also cellos in there and yeah really really great highly recommended if you don't know that yeah classic record um staying with the ecm label then went for um jack to Jonet's new directions which was his band with lester bowie or lester bowie as it's pronounced in america um john abercrombie and uh, eddie gomez and this is a lot, they did one studio album and one live album. I actually saw them around this time as well. They're fantastic. And so it's called Jack to Dance New Directions in Europe. And it's a very, um, as Mark said, very dynamic kind of record, mm. actually. Lester wand wanders on, on and off mic all the time. You can even yeah. hear him walking around the stage. Yeah. But yeah, it's a really a very unusual band, really. A lot of very strange lineup, but it kind of really. Really works, nice. Actually. Very spacious. He played the track Bayou Fever, or part of the track Bayou Fever off that. And then um, I'd had a trip to Lewis, which is a little town just outside Brighton, to meet my daughter a few weeks ago, and just chanced upon a record shop as soon as we parked up, and um, couldn't resist buying this album, which is also on ECM. Mm -hmm. It's the Ballad of the Fallen. I think it, this is the second album of this kind of aggregation of musicians that Charlie Hayden bought together, kind of protest yeah. vibe. And we listened to the, a Carla Blay track called Too Late, which I had to say, sort of given everything that's been going on in, mm. in the world in New Zealand and uh, just generally sort of very mournful and somehow mm. very, yeah, of the moment, even though this was recorded in the 80s. Incredible lineup of musicians, of course, on here. Don Cherry and uh, Michael Mantle, Paul Motion, etc., etc. Great album. I know that um, Ben Connors has this. Mm. Not so Ben Connors, Ben... Um, Costello. Ben Costello. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ben Connors has as well, but it's a different Ben. Starts off with a beautiful duet between um, Carla Blay and uh, 
Charlie Hayden. Yeah, yeah, really gorgeous. Yeah. They're all their records are really good, actually. The the um, Liberation Music Orchestra. And just to end up, just a nice. Again, this is making a second showing at least at a session. Played Lazy Afternoon, which is a bit mm. more thing to play at midnight, I guess. But off the um, <laughs> Grant Green record on Blue Note. Really odd lineup when you think about it, with vibes, organ, drums, and guitar. But kind of worked really, really well. Part they did, they did three or four records under um, Grant Green's name and a couple under Larry Young's name in the same lineup as well. Very similar lineup. Yeah, just very, very laid back, beautifully played. Really lovely. Yeah, very good record, this one. So this was one of the part of the reissue series, the first reissue series, but highly recommended record, actually. Mm. So thank you for uh, everyone who uh, commented and um, appreciates the new sound quality. We've, you'll notice that we're a little bit further away from the screen. Yeah, which I think, Yeah, it was a bit sort of uh, in your face, the last one. But um, hope everybody's well. And uh, yeah, keep, keep getting into the music and keep sharing it. Yeah, some good stuff. Yeah. Take care.